Yeah, so that so I remember I remember when you first got here. I know it was it was really hard. It was like like everything everything that had gone wrong was like just right in your face. Mm -hmm. And I know you were kind of like trying to, you know, eating a big huge piece of humble pie and at the same time dealing with addiction and then the the um, the rub of living in the home with your mom and your brother and and tight quarters and stuff like that was really hard. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, so so now. I mean, now you're clean and sober. Mm-hmm. How much time do you have now? Tomorrow will be 11 weeks. Tomorrow will be 11 weeks. So I'm almost at my three-month mark. That's awesome, man. Yeah. So, yeah, so kind of walk us through that a little bit. Like, so, um, I know I just kind of did the preamble of like yeah. how, how it was. but um, Well, just to fill in, because it does play a big role, but in September of last year, um, me and my kid's mom went through some stuff, and... I ended up really, really hurt from it, and uh, that happened in February of last year, so there was a lot of time in between that where I was trying to fix something that was not going to be fixed, and I knew that. I knew it personally, Mm -hmm. but I was trying so hard to keep it that way that I couldn't see it, and I ended up finding a neighbor in our condo building in Georgia that had some pills. And I was like, hey, you know, I know that those work and I love my opiates, so let me get some. And they weren't opiates. They turned out to be meth. And I knew that they weren't opiates just from being an addict for so long. But I kept taking them anyway. And they were cheap. They were $3 a pill. You know, she goes to work. I do whatever. Great. Cool. And, you know, I, I hit it well. And... So I, I ended up almost, I, not almost, I got to be honest, I went into a psychosis at the end of September last year where I thought my kid's mom had an earpiece in and was trying to get me killed. And I mean, I was full blown. Like I had called the cops a couple times. I had my cousin or my best friend show up with a gun and, you know, it was, it was just really bad. And... There was one night the cops came twice and the second time they wanted me to get checked because there was something obviously wrong with me. And the paramedics showed up and they they talked me into just taking my vitals, not going down, you know, nothing like that. My blood pressure was 197 over like 130. It, I mean, I was about to have a stroke and they they were well aware of that. And... So I ended up taking myself to the ER with my kid's mom. I told them what was going on and they put me into the psych ward without me really knowing. Mm. So I walked into the room and once I walked into the room, they shut the door, said, here's your clothes. You're staying for a while, get comfy. And they did a blood test and I heard them say over, um, over a walkie talkie that I was positive for meth. And so I looked up and I went, that was about me, huh? And the nurse went, oh, no, 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 it's about someone else. And then she picked it up and said, he's sitting right in front of me. And I just went, oh, man, this is when it's going to just crash down. The doctor came back in. I thought they were going to talk about the meth. What they told me was that I was anemic and that my hemoglobin was so low that I needed an emergency blood transfusion. Hmm. So my... Your hemoglobin's never supposed to be under a 13. Mine was at a 6. Wow. And if I hadn't checked myself in, I probably would have died. So I had three emergency blood transfusions in two days. I was locked in there for three days. Couldn't see anyone. You know, it's in the middle of the COVID pandemic. So, you know, especially in the psych ward, you're not getting visitors. But at that time, it was hard to even make calls. And that was when I really knew that that relationship was over because they had told my kid's mom about what was in me and everything else. And I knew from that point it was done. Right. And so things went on. We ended up moving back. But I know that if I hadn't have gone that night, I would have been dead by now. And I know that. Right. I mean, that that was as clear as day. But... That was my rock bottom. And then getting back here and moving in with my mom and 
having to follow guidelines was something I was not used to again. Sure. I made my own rules. I followed my own path. And my mom was trying to be very accommodating and trying to help me as much as she could. And I saw it a different way. I saw it as you're trying to make me do things instead of trying to help me. So we just butted heads. And I, even when we got back, I was telling people I was clean and I was good, you know, whatever. I was out drinking every day. I was smoking every day. And it got to the point where I, I got so drunk one night, I went back to my mom's. And I, all I can remember from it, honestly, was sitting on my bed and my mom and my brother laughing at me and just going, you are so drunk right now. I, like, I can't believe it. And that's all that I remember of that conversation. Right. I don't even remember what I drank. I don't remember anything. And then it got to a point where she had to be the mom that I needed and said, you know, you have until this point to get your stuff together or get out. And so instead of doing something about it, I wanted to feel sorry for myself, mm. which I'm good at also. So I would go and get beers. I go sit at the park. And I just sit and drink by myself. Have a good old time. Right. And of course it wasn't a good time. But that was when it was like, you're not you're not gonna get anything back out of this. Right. You're gonna keep putting distance in between you and your kids, their mom, your mom. You know, the, I I lost a lot of time through the years. Because I've I've been using for the past ten years. So what was the next, so I know you hit your bottom in Georgia, mm -hmm. you come here, and you're obviously, you're at, you're at your bottom, but you need to hit another, obviously, bottom, right? So what was, so what was that turning point for you, when you, sitting in the, sitting in the park, drinking beers by yourself, mm -hmm. realizing that this isn't working, like, when, when did the, the light bulb click, and you go, okay, I, I'm going to do something? It, it had, it had been there, and it was more of being scared of having to go down that path and know like you gotta you gotta do this on your own right you know i even had my kid's mom tell me when i decided to get sober i i was asking her to reassure me that she would be there and she said jacob i'm always here for you but you have to do this on your own right and i wanted to be angry i wanted to be upset and say you know you're a liar you were never there this and that you did this but in all reality, I did it to myself. And that was what I had to learn. And so not being able to see my kids and stuff like that, it, it, that was like, okay, I have nowhere to go. I have every, everything I said I never wanted to be, I'm it right now. Everything. Was that, was that around the same time we started talking? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like you, you saw. I've I was arguing with my mom over cigarette money. You know, I mean, we talked about that situation where stuff can happen over a cigarette. You saw how angry I was just over that, and that was at a point where I where I was saying, if I can, if I can just get a pack of smokes for the day, then I won't worry about it or stress about it, and I can move on to the next thing. When it was really just wanting to have something there you know and not even really trying to work for it or anything it was just you know i'm here you need to help well what i saw in that situation was somebody who was uncomfortable in their own skin mm -hmm. and you were like just <laughs> you it was like you were trying to break out of your own skin but you didn't you didn't even know what you were going to do you know i just it was it was, it was, I know it was hard. It was, it was a very hard situation. So then you, um, get yourself, you, I know you called, um, El Central, got mm -hmm. yourself, got yourself hooked up with them and started going through the process and, uh, started working a program. I, I did. And, and my, my biggest thing with that was I was so, so good at hiding my addiction that I was telling them that I was clean and I was using every day. And that's when it was like, okay, you're you're beating the system now too. What else do you need to prove, Jacob? You know, what else? Right. Why don't you just do what you're saying? 
why don't you prove to yourself that you can be sober instead of hide using? How about that? Sure. How about how about you show people that? And it it really came down to finding OBH through you. Mm-hmm. And you know, my like I said, my mom gave me that time frame and said, You have until this time to get your stuff together. And I had I had worked at Target for a little bit and you know I was lying about schedules and shifts and stuff getting moved around. I just didn't want to go to work. And my mom knew that. We just never really brought it up to each other. Right. But she knew I wasn't just following through. It was just being lazy. And so I got a different job and started working that one where I was actually more comfortable and I was happy with it. But... You know, I knew that that time frame was still coming to an end. And that was right around Christmas. I mean, I moved into OBH on December 27th, or uh, the 22nd. So that was, you know, my time frame was coming down to the very end, and I was praying a lot about it. And just, you know, I don't want to go back to the streets. Right. I don't want to be there again. And that was when I walked into my mom's house one day, and she said, hey, Dave texted me. He knows of a room that you might be able to rent, but you got to follow all the rules for real. And at that point, I was ready. I, I mean, I'm I'm ready. I, I I'm done. No, that's cool. And that's that's that's, that's cool. And, and I and I still have our conversation. I look at it sometimes. Mm. You know, if there's times where I'm getting home at 11 at night and there's no one around and I got some money in my pocket and I'm walking by 7-Eleven or Safeway it's like oh man a a beer would be so nice right now I'll look at that conversation and you saying you have to be sober you have to stay straight and I'll put my phone back in my pocket and just go you know what I'm two blocks from the house that's cool and once I get to the house it's done right on well that's cool I'm glad that that, wow that's really cool